Okay, this is 9.6, transforming the graph of quadratic cubic square root or the absolute value function. Now, the way you graph these in this problem is be a lot different, okay? So they will have the original on the graph, but then they're going to give you these buttons to be able to move it around, okay? And so it's gonna be really, really weird to try to navigate through this, so I'm gonna try to talk it out with each of the four different functions that I've selected or four different problems that I've selected. So the first is the absolute value, and I have the graph of the absolute value already given, okay? I need to decide what all is gonna happen to this graph before I can figure out which of these buttons I'm going to use. Now I did mention how you would know what to use. So if you have a negative outside of your basic function, you're going to click on this. If you have a negative on the inside of your function, you're going to click on this button. So it does the reflection for you automatically. If you have a coefficient on the outside, you're going to be selecting this button. And if you have a coefficient on the inside, you're going to be selecting this button. And then if you're doing plus or minus on the outside or plus or minus in the inside, you're going to be clicking on this button and then moving things around. You basically click it and then you click on the graph and then you drag and then you let go. Okay, but you've got to figure out where you're going to drag it to. So this particular problem, these two things, if you have them happening, these two things you want to do first. Then if you have any of this happening, you need to do that second. And then the last thing you'll do is the adding or subtracting. In the last topic, if you watch the video for the previous topic, it talks about how you have to do the multiplication things first, transformations first, and then you can do the adding and subtracting transformations last, just like the way the order of operations work, okay? Multiplying first and then add and subtract. So for these, I do see that I have a negative outside the bars. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to be clicking on this button, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do is click on that button and I'm gonna try to reanimate this and I'm gonna draw what you're gonna see inside the computer for each step, okay? And then I'll really, really bold out the final answer so you can see what the final answer should look like for this particular problem. So if I click on this, what it's gonna end up doing is it's going to end up graphing the parabola like this. So it's gonna flip it over, okay? And I'm gonna change colors so that I can um, symbolize all the different steps that are happening here, okay? So the next step, we have this problem and it will now we have a coefficient of one half and it's on the outside so i will be selecting this picture which has the arrow like this and it has the parabola and then you can make it wider or narrower depending on the graph now this one will should make it um more narrow okay so what you're gonna wanna do is when you click on this and you click on the graph, you're gonna have to move the graph, this little point here, to where it needs to go. And it's actually not gonna be that point. It's gonna be where you left off. So this is the point that is there after it got reflected. Now remember what it does when you have the one half. It takes half of that Y value. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna drag this to here and when you let go, it's gonna automatically draw the graph for you. And so it would draw it the way it's supposed to be drawn for you. So you're just dragging that. Instead of a one Y value, it's gonna be half of that, which is one half, okay? And as soon as you let go, it will draw the whole image. So you don't have to draw each individual point, it's just gonna be there for you. Now the last thing that's happening here is I have that minus two on the outside. And then I'm gonna be clicking this button, but I have to remember that a minus two means it's actually going to go down two units. So again, when I click here, I'm gonna have to drag it and then let go. So I would focus on the vertex. When you drag it, make sure that that goes down two units. And so when you let go, it's going to automatically 
um, draw your image for you. So you don't have to worry about trying to draw it. It will do it for you. Okay. But it should be like this. It's going to be a little bit more narrow or a little bit more um, wide than the original. And it's going to be going upside down because of the negative and it's going to have shifted down. But these are the buttons that you're going to have to use in order to get that graph on your computer. Okay. So that's great. We had one example just to kind of hone in these ideas and how to use these buttons. We're going to continue and do three more. Okay. So for the next one, we have this graph here. And so I'm going to go through the same steps. And a lot of these have three steps. There's, I think this one only has two. This one has three. This one has three. So you just have to take the problems for what they are and go through the motions. So the first thing I notice is that I don't have a negative in the front and I don't have a negative here. So I will not be having any of these things happen because I don't have those negative coefficients. So great, I don't have to worry about that, okay? So I don't have this happening. I do, however, have a coefficient of two. So I will have to use this, one of these two. And because the two is outside the cube, it's actually going to be this one. So the first one that I'm going to use is going to be that button that looks like this, okay? And when I click on it, I have to move this according to where I'm supposed to go. Now, because it's on the outside, it means I do it to the Y values. And what am I doing? I am doing the same operation. So times two to the Ys, right? So I'm going to take one point, which is that one, one. So I'm going to select this button. And then that one, one, I'm actually going to drag. If I multiply the Y value by two, the Y value will become two. So I'm going to drag this to the Y value of two and then let go. And when I do that, it's going to automatically draw the function for me. Okay. You don't have to draw it. It will draw it for you just by dragging that point according to what you needed to get. Now, the second thing that I noticed, I've got add and subtract, right? Which you can handle in one shot. Okay. So you can do those together in one. So here, my final answer was in blue. So this was the final, 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 final answer. Like that's what I should have ended up with, okay? Um, so step three was my final answer. Here, if I do all of the adding and subtracting in one shot, I'll be done with just my second step, okay? So I do need to use this button in order to move the graph up, down, left, or right. But how should I be moving it? Because it's minus four on the inside, I should be doing the opposite, which is add four to the x's, which actually makes it go to the right four. And then when you have plus three on the outside, you're going to add three to the y values, which is actually gonna make it go up three. So you're gonna click on this button, and when you come over here, you're going to drag that point where you left off at, and you're gonna drag it to the right four, one, two, three, four, and then you're gonna go up two. So it's gonna put it here. And when you do that, it's gonna draw all the rest of the graph for you. So I think I'm a little bit too close. It's much easier in the computer, but if you're grabbing this and you're going one, two, three, four to the right, and then up one, two, three, you'll end up here. And then the graph will automatically show up for you. But for me, I gotta actually continue. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. And then one, or no, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So then the graph will look like this, okay? But again, yours will automatically be drawn for you. So all you had to do is just shift it around and then you're done. Okay, next one here. We've got three things again happening, but I only need to do two things with my buttons. So the first thing I need to do is the negative that's on the outside. 
So I have to click on this button here. And then what that's going to do is it's going to draw this graph. Okay. Then the next thing I'm going to do, which is the last thing I'm going to do, is deal with my shifts. So I'm going to click on this and then I'm going to do my shifts. Now if it's minus 4 on the inside, that means it actually goes to the right 4. And if it's minus 2 on the outside, that means it's going to go down 2. So from here, you're going to click that button and then drag the last piece that you left with around. You're going to drag it to the right, one, two, three, four, and then down two units. And when you do that, you get here, and then it will draw it for you. And when you do that, it'll draw this image for you. And so this green one is the final, final, final answer. Okay. And it's always best to use the um, extra point that they give you. And it may not be marked on there. You're going to have to identify that point one, one. And it's the same point no matter what the graph looks like. They all have the same point one, 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 one. They all have the same value. So that's how you're going to be moving around when it comes to this or even when it comes to this. It's that point one, one that you're moving, okay? So for this one, again, we have two steps. So the first step is dealing with that two. So there's no reflection going on, no negatives, um, but you do have this and the numbers on the inside actually. So that means I need to be graphing, I need to be selecting this image with the little arrow going this way, okay? what does it do when you have times two in the inside? It actually means um, to divide by two and dividing by two, dividing by two is the same thing as multiplying by one half. So you're going to take one half of your x values. Now remember, you only need to deal with that point one one. So when you click on this, if you take the x value and you, the x value is currently one. If you take half of that, you get positive half. So then this point should be shifted or, um, yeah, kind of like shifted over um, to the point one half one. Okay. So once you click on this button and you click here, you're going to drag that button to the point negative one half. I'm sorry, one half and one. Then the last thing we need to do is deal with this plus on the outside. So you're going to click your shifting button again. And then because it's plus, that means you're actually going to go up one unit. So when you draw this pink one, it's actually going to draw the parabola for you. So that's where we would have left off. And then when you click this, you're going to move it up once. So you can still take that same point that you had and move it up one. So it should be at a half and two now. And then it's going to draw the um, the graph for you. And so you'll get that image there. And the second, the green one being the final answer. So you do have to do multiple buttons for the problems depending on how much is involved in that problem. Okay? So you may have to use all three. You may only need to use two of them. Um, it just depends on the problem. Okay, if this negative wasn't there, I wouldn't even have had to have done this. I could have just used that one button and got my answer. So it all depends on the individual problems.